Well, thank you, Ryan. And um, thanks, John. I know you reached out to me as well. And um, I always enjoy coming out and bragging on my guys, especially when I get introduced like that. Like I'm responsible for all the talent that's coming through Kingsport right now. Uh, no, I'm uh, super blessed to be here. Uh, I say that every year and I truly believe it. Um, I, I inherited the best position that anyone could inherit in a basketball program. And uh, I've just tried to take it and run with it and enjoy it as long as I possibly can. And this year I'm extremely excited for a lot of reasons. Um, there's a lot of exciting things going on in our basketball program. I do want to mention a few of those things. Uh, I'll be brief because I really want to talk about this team and what the expectations are for them as well. Um, since, since I guess the start of COVID and all the, the break or the downtime that we had, uh, we got to evaluate our program in a lot of different ways. And we found a lot of things we could do better for our players, for our program moving forward. And I will say we had a lot of extra um, hands on deck willing to pitch in. You know, we've been able to generate a lot of excitement, a lot of good quality people wanting to be a part of our program. So we've been able to find a few ways to do that. And, and um, I'm happy to say that we finally have a youth organization started up this year. Uh, my assistant coach, Matt Baker, has been instrumental in starting Tribe Basketball, which will be a basketball program from uh, second grade all the way up to the sixth grade leading into middle school. And we're going to try and uh, model some of those teams after or, or prepare them for the middle school level so that they're not lost. And, I, and I'll say that we've had great support from our city. We've had great support from the different com, uh, people in the community. And we've gotten a really, really good staff to, um, to coach these young players. And, and it's going really well right now. Uh, we also were able to start an organization called 423 Hoops. Uh, this is something that I started with all the region, or really outside the region, all the way from Morristown all the way up to Abingdon, Virginia. I was able to get a, an organization of coaches, head coaches together and, and start things to help our players get exposure, help offer our players opportunities that currently don't exist. And we were able to hold our first fall league this year, which is the top 64 players in all that area. We had eight of our guys were able to participate in that. And it's basically weekend basketball, playing the best talent against each other. And then at the finale, we're able to play against the Knoxville uh, leagues. And uh, it ended up going really, really well um, in its year one. We also started a website with 423 to put our players' highlights, stats, and it has generated a tremendous amount of um, coaches from at the college level attention on our players. So we're able to help them get additional eyes on them. And I think people are starting to realize that we have some players in this region that can play at the next level. Um, and that's not always been the case. We've kind of had that black eye about, well, we're not going to recruit that area. It's not very good basketball uh, because it's simply not true. We have a lot of players that are, that are very, very capable uh, to make an impact. Um, one, I sent a player last year on, on to Johnson University, and uh, for us, I think maybe the most he scored in the game was like six or eight points, and he had his first 20-point game Saturday uh, at Johnson. Um, so I was really pleased to see that he was able to, to carry it over in, in his freshman year and do a, do a very good job. Uh, so that's going on as well. Um, we also are starting, and, I, and people have been on me since I've been here, we want to have a tournament. We want you to do uh, an invitational. We want you to do a classic. All kinds of ideas. And, and that's something that's been stirring in the back of my mind for some time. So I've been able to put together a tournament board and we're going to start a classic this year. It's going to be December 21st and 22nd or 20th and 21st. It's a Monday and Tuesday before Christmas. And we're able to bring in eight teams from, I think it's five or six different states and we've got some of the most talented kids around uh, playing right there in the Buck Van Hus Dome. So um, that's going to be a really, really cool event. You need to check that out. We've got the number one um, sophomore out of North Carolina. We've got the number one sophomore out of South Carolina. We've got multiple high-level players, and we've got a lot of high-level coaches that are going to be attending that as well. So um, we're trying to put together some things that are exciting, for not only for our basketball team, but for our city, and then hopefully that'll build. Next year, it's gonna be a three-day event. It'll be a full-out tournament. So we're gonna continue that 
um, and moving forward. So we're really, really excited about that as well. And I guess I'll say all that to say, this team coming up is going to be a lot of fun to watch. Um, if you haven't been able to come out and watch games, I know last year was a disaster. Um, this year, we're very, very excited about the product that we have. Um, and, and I'm really excited because it hasn't always been that way um, with, with this group. And we've been good. We've been blessed to be in the sub-state game or the, the final 16 uh, for the fourth straight year. There's only been one other school in AAA last year. Last year we were in AAA. The, the league expanded this year to four, but there's only been one other team to make it to their fourth straight, and that was Blackman out of Murfreesboro. So we're, we're right there where we want to be, but I'm not really content. We want to be to that next level. We want to make it to the big house. And so we sat down this summer and said, what is it going to take to get our guys to that level, to get down there, to compete for a state championship and put that thing together? And, and what, what it turned out to be was we needed to challenge them as in every aspect we could possibly challenge them. Um, from their workout routine, to their um, skill sessions, to their practice uh, mentality, to the way that we play the game. And we have challenged these guys tremendously. We, we went on a, a worldwide tour this summer. We went to Asheville and played the best that they could find in that area. We went to Nashville, we went to Memphis. We went and played um, last year's state champions. We played teams that were in a state tournament last year. We played the best private schools that we could possibly get a hold of. And I, I will say that it helped us. I do think that it helped open our eyes to what we can do um, and, and move forward for this team. And this team, this group of seniors, I have five seniors, four of them are here. Uh, Malachi Hale cannot be here, he's taking a test. Um, but these group of seniors, Jack, Malachi, they played a lot as sophomores on the varsity level, uh, even to the point of maybe starting uh, part of those games. And in that season, uh, defensively, we were really, really bad. Uh, we weren't very physical. We played a lot of kids that weren't physically ready for varsity action at the level we want to play. So we pretty much were just backing up and hoping you couldn't shoot the ball. Um, and it was, it, was a le it was what we had to do um, to try and stay in the game. And we were able to do a very good job. We ended up having a good year, went to the sub-state. Um, by the end of the year, that group matured and developed enough to where we had, we had a really, really good season. The very next year, which was last year, um, everybody expected us to be really good from the beginning. Um, I was really excited about it. Uh, I had a great schedule laid out. You know, we were really fired up about what we were going to do and where we were going to travel. And then all of a sudden, uh, we got bombarded with changes. Um, COVID changes daily as to where we're going to play, who we're going to play, and it was, it was tough. Um, out of our first 12 games that we originally had on the schedule, 10 were changed, played a different team or a different time or whatever it might be. So 10 of those opponents that I had originally scheduled, we didn't get to play. And so therefore, your, your whole, the way that you build your season and you prepare your guys, that got thrown out the window. I mean, we had three weeks from the last game of the season to our first tournament game that we had to try and piece together, uh, making sure we didn't get quarantined, making sure we didn't have guys that were going to be out. And, and so anyway, we started off the year, we started off um, with part of our team. We played, um, I think, four varsity players and four JV players in our first game, and then slowly got a few guys back. But we started off and we were, we were um, like four and one, and then we played Farragut, which is a very physical team. Uh, they beat us in the round ball. Um, we, we lost to Jeff County, who had, who had a big physical team. We lost to them, and we were five and three. And I go home after we, we lost to Jeff County, and uh, you know my wife's always supportive, uh, but sometimes she's pretty honest. And she said, I thought we were going to be good this year. And I said, well, we will be. She said, well, when? <laughs> and, and I was looking around, I'm like, you know what, you have a point. And I said, uh, so, but, but what it was, was our guys just weren't ready for that level of play. And we were, after being uh, five and three, uh, we ended up going on a 17 and two run and ended the season 25 and five. Um, so I do think that those games helped us. Um, so we carried that over into this off season. We wanted to play the very best we could play 
um, uh, challenge our guys the, the most that we possibly could. And so we put it together a summer schedule, and then I carried that over into our schedule that we're about to face now. And it's going to be uh, brutal, uh, but it's going to be a lot of fun, and it's going to be um, a fun challenge for our guys to, to I guess, go through. Um, we are playing uh, Moravian Prep uh, tomorrow. Uh, it's a really, really good prep school out of North Carolina. We're going, leaving Sunday to go to uh, Alabama. We're playing uh, Scottsboro. They were like 24 and eight last year, made it to their final four, I think, in Alabama. Um, we're playing uh, Spain Park down there as well, who is really, really good, if we can make it to the championship game. We're going to the Next Level Invitational in Nashville at Christmas. That's CPA, um, who is always really, really good in our state. Brentwood Academy, which I'm sure everybody's familiar with. Um, Norcross, Georgia, which has three of the top 20 players in the country. Um, Cedar Hill, Mississippi, who is, um, uh, puts out NBA quality players regularly from, from down in the southern part of the state. So anyway, I say that to say um, our guys are going to be challenged. There's no question about that. But I feel like that's going to help us get to where we need to be. And they've accepted it, you know, and that's the big part. They've accepted that challenge. And I'm excited, and I told them, or a few of them maybe, you know um, where you stand when, when you go and enter a team's tournament and they put the host school against you in the first round. Um, and that's what tournament we're in when we go to Nashville. And they're expecting um, to, to just walk in and, and, and I guess put us in the loser's bracket from the beginning. Uh, but I think they're going to get a different message uh, because our guys are going to show up and, and battle and compete. And I know what they can do um, if we'll continue to grow because – from their sophomore year, last year they got so much tougher. And even this year, and, and he alluded to a little bit different style of play. The style's not entirely different. It's just a little bit faster both ways. Uh, defensively, we're going to pick you up 94 feet um, from baseline to baseline and rotate our players and, and keep pressure on you. Uh, defensively, uh, we have to get a lot better, but I feel like that could be our strength. Um, you know, we have guys that are now more willing to guard the ball or they understand the importance of it. Uh, either way, I'm good with as long as they're defending the ball. Offensively, we do have a lot different system. We are trying to give our players more freedom uh, because I feel like they've earned that. Uh, you know, they're high IQ guys, they're very skilled, and let them make decisions on the floor rather than control them. And, and I think that can be probably our, our greatest weapon um, but it's also going to drive me bonkers um, if, I, if I can do that. But it, it's a lot of fun to teach, uh, but it's very, very difficult to teach high school guys how to run a system with that much freedom in it and then make the right decision. So uh, these guys have done a great job. We went down to Granger, our first game, uh, Tuesday, and uh, it started off really, really good, I thought. You know, the pace was good. Uh, we had pressure was good. Uh, I thought we were taking pretty good shots. Um, and it wasn't until after the game and the post-game interview, I realized that we were down 15-3 to three to start the game. Um, and I'm like, hold on, we were down what? 15-3? to three? I mean, we were taking good shots. We were pushing the basketball. We are getting shots at the rim. Our guys came out a little bit nervous, a little bit too amped up, uh, a little bit um, – not really too much too aggressive. They were just they were just fired up for the moment, and we missed like eleven layups. Um, so we didn't really look quite as sharp as we will. Um, but from that point on, we ended up in the second half. We scored sixty points in the second half. Only eight of those were free throws, and I subbed um, the last four minutes of the fourth quarter. We were up so big, I subbed. Um, uh, for the last four minutes, and we only scored two points. So we scored fifty-eight points. In, in that short amount of time. And that's just because our guys have a confidence level that they can score, that they can play. And the style that we play is going to have so many possessions in a basketball game. We, we averaged about 66 possessions in a game last year. In our first game, we had 90. Um, so the pace of play is, is a little bit quicker, uh, but I feel like that's our advantage. Uh, we've got nine guys that can absolutely roll. We've got three more that can, that can provide us with some, some help. And, uh, and I'll talk a little bit about him. Malachi, I'll, I'll call him out since he's not here first, or since he's not here. Um, Malachi has, has been one of our focal points since his sophomore year. 
Um, he's extremely physical, extremely athletic, lengthy, and is, has expanded his game tremendously. Um, he, he's going to be a huge um, asset to our program. He's going to be fun to watch. So if you come out and you want to see some dunks and you want to see some guys flying around playing defense, then nobody's going to do it better than he is. Um, Jack, I'll let you stand up here because I'm going to make you talk a little bit too. Um, Jack is probably one of our most skilled guys. Um, he's pretty tall, uh, but he's, he's as skilled of a guard as we have. Um, he's going to give people fits. Um, he had 21 the other night, and don't even, don't even think he had one of his best games. Uh, he played well. He shot the ball well. Um, defensively, um, well, we'll talk about that later. It'll get better. <laughs> Um, but he's going to be a lot of fun to watch. You know, he's a guy that can get up and down and, and make some, some unbelievable plays just because he has put in as much time or more time than anybody in our whole program. He loves the game. You're going to see him have an opportunity to sign and play basketball next year as well. Uh, McKinley, you can come on up too. McKinley is one of my favorites um, because he didn't start out that way. Um, he, I, I remember vividly sitting at Asheville his sophomore year. And, and, and the guy goes in, and McKinley's backing up, backing up, backing up, and the guy just comes in and just hammers it. And I'm like, McKinley, you've got to take a charge right here. And he, he's like, uh, you see this right here? I'm not willing to mess this up. <laughs> and I looked at Coach. I said, Coach, he'll never be on the floor for us. He will never play a minute in our program. He'll never get on there because he's not tough enough. And uh, the joker has proved me wrong. Um, he has come, and he has, he has embraced that toughness. He's one of our grittiest guys that we have, and he's, going to, he's a lot of fun to play. And he also shoots pretty good. He shot over 40% last year, so not, not too bad um, for just a gritty defender. So he's, he's a great part of our program. Greg, Greg um, is, is a guy that did not get to play one minute last year. Um, unfortunately, he tore his ACL right before the season, like one week or one day, one, one day before our first game. He was one of the four that were out and did not get to play. And uh, it, it, hurt, it hurt us bad. It hurt me mentally. It helped our team, or it hurt our team because he pours everything he has into our program. He is a, a team first guy who um, loves our program, loves our team, and it just hurts to see a kid miss out on those opportunities. But I will say, he worked himself back. He is ready to go and he is, he is gonna play extremely well for us this year. Shoots the ball well. Um, is, is a physical beast on the glass um, from the guard position and, and just works relentlessly. So he's going to be a lot of fun, have a great senior season. Um, I think he's ended up going, you already know where you're going, right? Uh, University of Alabama. He's going to Alabama. Um, he made like a 40 on his ACT or something. So uh, they say that's pretty good. I don't know. Um, yeah, it's out of 36, yeah. He, he's pretty smart. All right, Carter, come on up, Carter. Carter's our new guy. Uh, he's the one that we were giving a hard time. Um, I guess we played you about six or seven times, maybe, in, in the couple years we played against him. He played at Cherokee. Uh, unbelievable score. Uh, he averaged over 20 last year. Um, despite the – not against us. No, it wasn't against us. Um, he got double teamed against us everywhere. Uh, from the time he stepped off the school bus to the time he got back on the school bus, we had guys in his pockets and uh, trying to make his life miserable. Uh, but he's an extremely talented player. Um, really, really excited to have him and the things that he brings to our program. And the thing that's the best about it, he fits right in just like he's one of us. Um, he has the same mindset. Um, he's, he's an unselfish player that, that wants to win beyond any, uh, any individual accolades. And that is something that's going to be very special for this team because we've got several guys, probably eight, that could put up 20 in a game, and they probably will have a 20-point game this season. Um, and that's uncommon, very uncommon, because usually when you get talented players, they start wanting it for them. And, and when you have those guys like we have, uh, we have strength in numbers, and we have a lot of strength. Um, and, and I'm excited about what we can do with this group. So I'm going to let them kind of talk a little bit. If you have questions, please put them on the spot and ask them. And I'll start out with Jack here. I'm Jack. Um, I guess I'm number 14, and uh, I guess this is my third year on varsity. Uh, I, it's gone by fast, I guess. You know, sophomore year, we're playing. The coach calls me and some of my buddies up to varsity, and then 
a short two years later with COVID, it seems like it's been a couple months, and it seems like sophomore year was just a little bit ago, but it's gone by fast, but I'm excited for this year, and uh, we all are looking forward to, you know, finally getting to the state tournament and uh, trying, to, trying to win the state tournament. How tall are you? Uh, I'm 6'4". Uh, I'm McKinley Tincher, I'm number 10, and I'm a senior. Uh, but yeah, like Jack said, uh, we got called up on varsity sophomore year. I didn't play barely any. If we were up by 40, I played a little bit. Um, but, you know, Coach Boyle always likes to tell that story, and you know, it's not my favorite story. Um, but I like how he ends it. Uh, that summer, I really, I really took it to heart. And I knew that I could play at that level, and I knew that I uh, was good enough. So I knew that I had to get tougher on the defensive side. Um, and that first practice that we had, uh, my junior season, they really were impressed with how much stronger I've gotten. And I turned into a player that didn't play any sophomore year to one that I was in uh, parts of games where it was, a, it was a win or lose. And I was really fortunate not to have coaches that are confident in me and my shot, um, who sometimes even get mad at me for not shooting the ball. Um, and I was kind of surprised about that. Uh, usually, like, don't shoot it, but now they like shoot it. So it's it's nice to have people who believe in me uh, to the fullest extent. So, yeah. Hi, my name's uh, Gregory Allen. Uh, I'm number 21 for Goblin Point Basketball. Um, I was sort of in the same boat with McKinley my sophomore year. Uh, I was one of the people that got called up. But me and him were bench buddies the whole year. So, um, had some fun. We'd go up when you know got 40. But. Um, Last year I missed out because, like Coach said, I tore my ACL. Um, but luckily, I, I've recovered, and I just can't wait to play this year. I'm ready to take advantage of all the opportunities that hopefully I get to have this year, and just can't wait. I'm Carter Metz. I'm number two. Uh, this is my first year here. Uh, I was thinking about, you know, I knew I wanted to come here all during last season, and then. Like they were talking about that story after the game. I was talking to mom and dad, and I was like, I'm not doing it anymore. I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> it was a miserable game and a miserable couple of days. But and once we cooled off and made the decision, I've been absolutely blessed to be a part of this program and be able to kind of move up to Kingsport on and off the court. And it's provided me so many opportunities, and it's been life changing. I will add a few things to that now that they don't get the mic back. Um, Carter, his first week here, uh, he comes in and, and we're practicing over at Robinson because they're working on the dome a little bit. And uh, we're, we're working on defense, and that's something he's not worked on before. So uh, <laughs> we're over there in the, the gym and we're doing our, our, our intense workouts and trying to work on pressuring, like containing the ball. And that's one of our big things right now is we've got to be able to pressure, but keep the guy in front of us. We can't just pressure and let him run by. So we get Carter out there. It's not two days. He, he, he tears, or not tears it, but he, he strains his, um, his groin, and he's out. I said, Carter, that's what happens when you get in a defensive stance. You know, you get a little stretch in your muscles there. You know, it just hurts a little bit. And, uh, but he's, he's, uh, he's adapted well. We had a phenomenal summer um, with him. Uh, and he's, he's right in there with our guys defending the ball. So I'm excited again. Uh, anything else you want to share? All right, you guys got any questions for us? Yes. <laughs>